Um, just first of all, to welcome the, the witnesses in and, uh, and thank you for your presentation. As I said, a lot of areas have been covered already. Um, I, I, it's just something that Mr Tracy that I picked up on there. You, you mentioned about some of the initiatives in sports, uh, um, sports uh, things that were taking place in towns and villages, and you used the word they were getting fairly competitive. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, just to harp on that, now I, I, I understand that, like from from certain underage level in sports, that a lot of sport is now non-competitive. And <clears throat> have you seen a better uptake in sports because of that, or have you seen maybe a drop off or a change in psychology in that because it's not competitive? I know when I was a kid going out, like it was all about winning the game, or obviously trying to get on the team. When it, it would drive you to do better, it kept driving you. So I just want to see from to see has there any been studies that done to see has there been more participation participation in it now because I think that was a lot of, of what it was as well in actually getting kids involved that, that weren't traditionally interested in sport. The second thing is you, you mentioned there around if you could just elaborate I, I, one of the witnesses mentioned about um, play lunchtime and play time and how to, to, to navigate that but also I, I'd, I'd like to maybe go a bit further than that and talk about sport time and play time because everything seems to be getting really, really structured now for kids like sport is play, but some, some people are just not into sport, but they're into playing. So it's, if, if you could comment around that. Thirdly, how also maybe to encompass the arts, I suppose performance arts around that, has there been any discussions and talk on that because there's a crossover between performance arts and sports as well, particularly around dance or, or, or that type as well, that would maybe catch people that, again, are not traditionally into sports. And I say that now as a soccer player myself, I, I play sports myself. And also just to make reference to the, the Croom climbing wall that you mentioned, obviously Croom is just on my back doorstep at home. So have you seen, has that been a success case for, again, attracting more people? I, I, I'm really trying to target the people who are not traditionally interested in sport because anybody who, who is like, will, will join the local team anyway and will play and will be into probably fitness and stuff for us, the people who are kind of on the, on the margins. Um, just on the competitive aspect, um, uh, children by their nature are competitive. And that's, that's a given. If you put two seven-year-olds out, they'll compete against each other. Um, we've uh, led the way probably with a lot of the governing bodies in, in, in highlighting that it is about participation, certainly up to 12, 13 years of age. And a lot of the sporting organisations have come in and roll out programmes in terms of ki uh, children participating for the sake of participating and taking away the, uh, the winning aspect of it, taking away a county championship or, or a monster championship at a very a early age. So that, has, that trend has happened and it, is, it has helped and uh, our study will, will probably prove that in terms of, in terms of what, what's happening. And the three main field sports that we would would feel which uh, would fund would be the GA, the IRFU, and and, and, and the FEI. Uh, uh, the, uh, they've they've kind of started tackling those those issues because they were hugely competitive uh, for under 12s, and it was actually putting uh, children off. Right. So I'm with you totally and utterly 100% supporting uh, that we need to make sure that the kids are not really competitive at a too early age and, they sh and their experience should be fun, enjoyable and even if they lose by 12 goals it's still a great performance. It's that type of thing and that's, that's what, what should, be, should, be, should be encouraged. Um, uh, sport time and play time. Um, in the past a lot of us participated in sport in a non-formal way. Right, we kicked the ball out in the street. It was playtime, but we were involved in sport. Right, and that kind of informality, a lot of that is gone. So that's why the physical activity guidelines are not being met. So uh, it's a critical piece. And I think, and I, I, I again support you 100%, Deputy, in that no one should be excluded from activity. Uh, if they can't kick a football, that's fine. There's a sporting activity for them, there's an activity for them. And one of the things that we feel, uh, we believe, that children now have far more great cho greater choices than they had in the past, without a shadow of a doubt. If you were in, in a country parish, you, you, it was Gaelic games or nothing. Now they have a lot more choice, and I think that's to be welcomed. And uh, again, I think parents and, and schools they need to make sure 
that if, if a child isn't skilled in kicking a football, there is an activity for them. And that's something we would strongly, strongly encourage. In terms of performing arts, the PE curriculum, and this is why the PE curriculum in primary school and secondary school is so important, caters for that uh, in terms of the curriculum, in terms of the performing arts, and it's part of that. And again, it is providing the opportunity for children to become competent in an activity and something that they can learn the skills early and carry them out through their life. Right. So really important pieces. And again, this is why we'd be kind of advocating for more PE in school and, 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 and like, OK, it's one day a week in primary school, two days in secondary schools. We'd really love to see increases in, in, in that time during the school time. Now, we know there's really competitive pieces in, in school for time uh, and the curriculum is, is, is very tight, but it is making sure the children are involved during school time in activity during that school time. And again, this is where, where um, uh, run mile at, during, during school time is an important piece that will roll out. And it's been rolled out in Mayo and places like that uh, during September of, of this year. So it's finding activities that you can do simply in a confined space uh, or, or, in, in a, or in the local playing field. You know, so it's, it's trying to be creative. Uh, and we know there's constraints, but trying to be creative so that the teacher isn't constrained so they can do some activity for the children so that they're physically active and involved in some play or whatever it is, but where they are physically active. And I think school boards and, and, par and parents and, and teachers need to get into that space, that they see this as part of, of their schooling. And this is, we need to change that culture in terms of it's not really all about running, it's not all about reading, writing and math. We're investing in, in children's health and their well-being for life here. So we need to, I suppose, keep bombarding and brainwashing and try to get that message out all the time uh, to get everyone involved. The climbing wall, I'll let Una address it? Yeah, I suppose specifically in relation to the climbing wall, it's only been in there about a year and a half now, so we, it's something all of our community sports hubs will go through a full evaluation, and, and it's something we're rolling out nationally, but slowly but surely, so we, we're looking at a lot of different models, so be they based in a community centre or be based, as John mentioned, in a school or in a particular environment, for example, an outdoor environment, so it will be evaluated fully, we haven't got to that stage yet, but the local school are now participating in climbing programmes as part of their PE programme, um, they just have to go across the school to the climbing wall, so it's opened up a big opportunity for them. And we were doing um, a visit, and we have invested quite a lot of funding into the northeast inner city here in Dublin. And in one of the schools, there's a climbing wall, and they told us that it's only used once or twice a year when the people from Mountaineering Ireland come in and teach them. So we're trying to introduce training so that they can use that wall all the time in that school. So the teachers are trained, and local community leaders and youth leaders and things are, are able to actually teach climbing. So that's very important for us. Um, in relation to the the other area um, around um, the non-competitive side of things um, and as John said the emphasis um, on developing um, what we have referred to as physical literacy and this is something that's becoming again a sort of a term that's being used more and we're trying to develop a physical literacy consensus statement in Ireland so that people will understand better what it means so in line with the maths, the reading, and the, 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 those sort of literacy skills, that physical literacy is considered to be a recognised term where it's about understanding, about being physically active and the fundamental movement skills of jumping, running, throwing, so that play is something that becomes normal and, and that pe kids are able to play because we're finding that kids when they reach secondary school don't even have the fundamental movement skills. They aren't able to catch a ball, they aren't able to jump very far or being able to... So it limits their ability to take part in a lot of activities. The, um, the um, primary school's um, physical education um, teachers are... the, the, the PEAI and the PDST have developed a whole module around um, physical literacy. So it's about understanding, as I said, the fundamental movement skills, but also understanding the, the importance of physical activity and the importance and an understanding of how to achieve it and the importance of recognising how to achieve it in different environments. So it's a, it's a holistic approach to, to, to being physically active and, and fit and healthy and, and the whole area of well-being as well. Um, and, and also, I suppose I just wanted to refer back to John mentioned earlier, the operation transformation. We would work very closely with them in, in the physical activity elements that they introduce. And we find that a lot of schools and programs are, are 
brought on at the time of the Operation Transformation but continued on. So there's a, there was a concept at 10 at 10, so kids at 10 o'clock do 10 minutes of exercise at their classroom desk. So those sort of initiatives we're finding have, have continued on beyond the program and, and those have been very good at introducing that level of activity during the school day within the confines of a classroom even. So. Thank you uh, for that. Um, I have just a few questions myself. 